Hey, everybody, you've all heard by now Logic 10.7 was released, and there's a lot of really good stuff in this. But for this video, I wanted to do a walkthrough of converting one of your normal songs, your one of your current songs, into the spatial audio format with Dolby Atmos. Now, this is certainly probably the headliner for all the new features, and um, I wanted to certainly go through just how it works and, and some of the ways that we can do this. And we're going to use an actual project for this. This project currently is a, a spatial audio, but with ambisonics. I've been doing ambisonics on YouTube for a while now. And so I'm curious about some of the things and how they translate over uh, to other formats. So I'm going to push play for one second. You can hear the first couple seconds. Okay, so in order to convert this over to the Dolby Atmos format, what I want to do very, very first is um, recognize that I've made a new alternative. So the original one was Air 360, and this one's Fresh Air Atmos. Um, I just did that by doing a new alternative. So now that I have that, I'm going to start converting some of these things over. Uh, first and foremost, I need to remove a few things. So I'm going to select all my tracks and take off the B360 plugin because we're not doing this through the Waves technology. And I'm going to take off the Ambisonics monitoring plugin as well. So now that part is all ready. Next part, I want to make sure, and I just looked, but I'm going to recognize it. We have the IO buffer size above 512. You can't have it at one of the low settings for this, at least according uh, to the documentation. Next, we're going to go to project settings under the file menu under audio, and we want to make sure A, our sample rate is at 48 kilohertz. It doesn't have to be, but it will be up converted uh, for use for Dolby Atmos. But so new projects start at 48, um, existing ones, uh, you know, just, I guess, run with what you got. But we're going to turn on spatial audio here with Dolby Atmos, like that. And it's going to say that we have, um, some other surround things happening, we're going to try to convert them over. Uh, the other plugins were in the quad format for Ambisonics. Okay, now you'll see all of my panners went to a different surround format. This is the 7.1.2 uh, surround format. Uh, this is, uh, there's really two different types of things we're going to be doing here with Dolby Atmos. The majority of our tracks will look like this. They're going to be uh, just in a surround format that is a horizontal plane, just around. And uh, those are going to be our beds, uh, which we're going to go out and they're going to be combined with some of the Dolby Atmos 3D objects at the, the final master track. So we have these two different things that are happening there. Uh, now, we can come in. And um, let's open up the, the Atmos plugin. And let's solo out like a synth part here with this panner. We can close that. And on the, the Atmos plugin, there's a monitoring format drop down, which tells the plugin what we're listening to this on, what system. The 7.1.4 is uh, would be a speaker system that you'd have set up. In this case, I'm listening on headphones, and I want to hear the spatial audio, so we're going to switch it to binaural. Binaural uses head-related transfer functions and uh, psychoacoustic principles in order to make it sound like it's coming all around us uh, just with two channels. You wouldn't use this if you have speakers. This is really a headphone format. So we're going to be able to hear things because we are in binaural. So now I already have some automation uh, that was from the other setup uh, with the, the 360 and binaural. Uh, I was doing some stuff with binaural before this. And it actually, I tested this out once before, transferred over when I converted this to this new panner. Let's go back to the beginning. You can hear that real start. With binaural technology, the key is to have motion. 
because if you don't move it around, if you put something binaurally right behind you, it's going to sound like it could be in front of you unless you hear motion and have some of those spatial cues. That's why something like a headphone tracker for certain things there are so great with some of the, uh, the high-end Apple headphones. So cool. We don't necessarily need those for this, but um, you are going to be able to monitor with binaural technology right here. Okay, let me show you another example of this. Um, because the drums, I don't have any automation on them. Uh, let's open up their panner and I'll just move it around so you can hear that. Now, with this format, we do have these other speakers, which are on the vertical axis. And so you're going to be able to do spherical as well as along just the plane. So we can actually pan kind of a, a really interesting way. So we have the elevation, for instance, right there. Okay, so we have the ability to do quite a bit just with these surround panners going out to the Dolby Atmos plugin. Uh, but we also many times want to actually use the object-oriented functionality of Dolby Atmos. Now, even in the documentation and in my own experience, this is something we want to save for certain elements. Most of the time, the music just going around us in surround on one level of our ears is going to create a very dynamic, interesting mix. But sometimes we want to take advantage of the object-oriented nature of, of this whole setup. And so we can do that as well. So, for instance, my voice. Uh, let's come down and convert this one to a 3D object panner. I can do it here on the panner. Um, or um, I believe I can also do it here in the surround choice. Like that. So now I've got two of these for the voice. And I'm going to do two more for these ones right here. So this is a part of the conversion process. So I'm gonna come into the first one and you'll see that they showed up in my Dolby Atmos plugin. These are essentially bypassing parts of the routing and logic. They're going directly from these channels now into the Dolby Atmos plugin. So I'm gonna do something like this with um, the first one. The second part, I'm going to do something like that. And then for these two ones in the back, I'm going to put them here, but I'm also going to raise them up to give them a little movement upwards. And these can be automated too. I mean, you can automate these moves. You don't have to just make them stagnant. Movement, I think, in subtle amounts can be good, but not always. So now we have this. here in the Atmos plugin, we can change the binaural render for some of these. So for instance, if we wanted to put these uh, on the far level, I'll let you hear what that sounds like. <laughs> A very subtle change, especially with everything else going on. Which brings me to one of the next most important things in terms of working with um, with Dolby Atmos like this, because what we're doing right now is working 
with everything in my previous levels. And my previous levels were really set up for making this loud um, and loud to compete and but loud to be prepared for uploading. I was keeping, you know, the, the right metering techniques in there hadn't been mastered. But right now it was just everything was kind of, you know, uh, push the pedal to the floor kind of thing. That's not how we do things with Dolby Atmos. You have to be very careful. And it's minus 18 LUFS, which is the, the key uh, number for this. And in fact, uh, what we got to do is, at least what is recommended, is that we come through here and add a number of different plugins. One of them is the gain. And then you'll see we're doing a limiter, 7.1.2. And then you're going to see that we're doing a level meter. And then after the Atmos plugin, we're doing the level meter. And then we're doing a loudness one at the very end. Now you'll notice some are before Atmos and some are after the Atmos plugin. That's because we have a, a new dichotomy you have to deal with when mixing like this. The ones before here are processing all of the tracks which are not object-based. So if there are the 7.1.2 tracks and you're panning around, all of them get uh, adjusted before the Atmos because they're still coming the normal route that we always expect. The ones that are coming after Atmos are pretty much everything combined, but it's with the addition of the 3D objects. And those jump the the line so to speak and just jump into the atmos plugin and then go out with the rest of them so we need to check our input levels and our output levels to make sure everything's uh really hunky-dory with that so we're going to keep this one just open all the time and let's let's start with this one the gain because everything on those bed tracks is loud um and so we're going to uh certainly want to adjust it a little bit okay so So a combination of the gain versus the limiter just to control things, and that gets us there. That leaves all of our vocals much louder because they're not going through any of those plugins. They're coming out of the Atmos plugin. And so I'm gonna actually look at the gain structure here. I took them about minus 10 down, and um, I'm gonna do a cheat for this because I'm converting a project, but in the future I would certainly uh, wanna gain stage this all a lot differently. So I'm just going to do the output gain, uh, like minus 10 for each of these, just as a starting place. Uh, let's see, we have this one, minus 10. And we have this one. And actually, cool technique with this, we're going to click on the link, because then I can just set this down to minus 10, we could even type that in, but then I can just click on the next track and the same plugin, if it's on the next track, will pop into this place and I can just keep on going down. Okay, cool. Let's take a listen.
So I need to actually do quite a bit of just adjusting to get this right with the goal of having this be uh, at minus 18 LUFS or lower. And um, all of these meters are doing slightly different things, but um, we have the gain to turn the beds down, the limiter to help with that, and then this level meter to kind of take a peek at it and see what we're getting from it. Um, and then we combine it with the objects from Atmos. Then we have another level meter. If we're going out 7.1.4 at that point, that's a lot more useful, but then we're not. And we're just, we really want to double check the loudness meter at this point uh, and going through there. We can put the loudness meter earlier if we want um, to also see it going into the Atmos, but uh, we need to be checking these like crazy because it's real easy just to listen and not pay attention and we want to make sure that we're hitting the optimal space for not only the Dolby Atmos but also when it gets converted to binaural th those two things do matter. Um, okay so once you're all done say that you're completely happy with your mix um, then we do the export and the export is not going to happen in the normal way where we do like a bounce or something like that. The biggest difference, and um, I was just reviewing some information from Music Tech Explained, what an awesome YouTube channel that is. And um, you know, when I first made a video about this today, I really ran into like just trying to rush through this. And um, of course, you can't just do a normal bounce because uh, the thing about Dolby Atmos being object-based is that it's not going to just read the tracks and then put them around. It actually needs to have some different flexibility. And so the export ends up in a very different place. And we're gonna go down to export and you'll see we'll export the selection as ADMBWF. And this is the format that we end up with. So let's put this inside of our music folder and let's do a new folder for Atmos and we're gonna save that. And so it's going off of the selection we made just like that. So let's come out here to our finder, music, Atmos, and this is the file then that is resulting from it. If we pull this into here, you're gonna see something. Uh, it says add selected files to tracks, use existing tracks or create new tracks, place all files on a track, uh, but we're gonna do uh, create new tracks just so you can see what this looks like. And so these are all of the pieces that belong to that particular section of the song. So these are all of the elements of, of that, that we would actually then be able to take that file and, and use it for the final destinations. Uh, and so this right here, that file that we looked at, you can't just do a bounce, you actually have to do the export to get it into the proper you know, Atmos uh, object-based file. Okay, so once again, that's right down in here. So you can do the entire project or just a selection. And it's right next to where we do the AAF and the Final Cut Pro XML. Okay, cool. I think that takes us to the end of all of this. It's, you know, definitely a simpler view of the overall process. And uh, you're gonna be seeing a lot of things out there which go through this, some of them more in depth than others. This particular video is looking more at just a quick workflow of getting your song converted from one into another. But um, this I think is, is an important final step to be able to get it out.